Hi, this is Martin from Luxury Electronics and we are in kind of unusual space because uh, we are in Prague and we are here for Klipsch Jubilee. And I'm not here alone, I'm joined with Nick, who is like the head would say behind the Jubilee, <laughs> pretty much uh, build it it's, uh, himself <laughs> alone no, 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 no. <laughs> or something like that? <laughs> unfortunately not, unfortunately not, no. Uh, I'm Nick, um, I'm the senior sales manager for Klipsch uh, at the Premium Audio Company and yeah, it's my pleasure to be here with you and to give you some, let's say, more information uh, than maybe you already know about uh, Wonderful clip Jubilee speaker. That would be perfect because uh, I really want to know uh, something more about it because it's magnificent on yes. the first look. Yes. Yeah, it's really great. What can you tell me about the like history or the let's say idea be behind yeah, it? Because yeah. this is so unusual. Yes, it is. It is. You know, um, we have a look to the speaker. Then uh, the first impression is wow, it's mm -hmm. amazing. It's big. It's huge. It's heavy. Yeah, and it looks totally different to, let's say, standard speakers uh -huh. at the market. But uh, uh, for us, for Klipsch, it's not only a speaker, it's not only a huge speaker, it's a part of the history. Or we say, it's the history. Because, you know, um, Paul W. Klipsch founded uh, the Klipsch company in 1946. And uh, Paul W. Klipsch, uh, or the Klipsch company, was famous or is famous for the horn technologies. Mm -hmm patented horn technologies. Mm -hmm. And he had a dream. The dream was to create uh, a full horn loaded speaker, two-way, cover out all the frequencies and will give you the impression that you are in front of a concert, in front of an orchestra, mm -hmm. to not only to listen to the music, to enjoy the music, to feel the music. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the Jubilee, uh, was already existing by drawings from Paul W. Klipsch. But uh, the dream never comes true to create, to manufacture, to build such a huge speaker. And uh, thanks to the, the engineering team in uh, Hope, Kansas, US, and uh, their knowledge and their experience, they were able to produce such a speaker based on the drawings from Paul W. Klipsch, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the result. And that means that uh, the dream now comes true. <laughs> that's the jewelry. That's uh, really, really very nice. And, and uh, sadly, that uh, Paul W. Klipsch cannot live to the present of them. Unfortunately, uh, not. But uh, yeah, this is this this is this is amazing. So you know. Um, I, I would like to give you some, some, some small details about the speaker. Definitely, because, because uh, I heard you and uh, others uh, as well that you say it's two-way speaker. Yes. It's great. That, be, because the two-way is like history of speakers. Yeah. Pretty much uh, that's uh, where the speakers came from. And nowadays, a lot of free, three-way speakers, three and a half-way mm -hmm. speakers, and now this magnificent speaker two-way. Why it's, is that? It's back to the roots. Mm -hmm. Simple to say, it's back to the roots. Um, we focused on, 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 on the horn technology, uh, compare with some, I will come later to that point, compare with some new development, new technologies. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the crossover, the crossover is an active one, what is a very nice combination in, in, in the historic mm -hmm. parts and uh, the, the new generation of um, um, music reproducement. First of all, I would say the first impression is the most important. And what we see here is a huge speaker which looks different. And uh, you know, we are talking, we are talking about uh, 370 kilogram per <laughs> pair. <laughs> So the speaker is divided in two parts. We do have the bottom part. It's uh, uh, responsible for the, for the lower frequencies, for the bass response. The lower part has a weight of 150 kilogram each. It's amazing. <laughs> and 35 kilogram, the top part, the top part, the horn driver, uh, responsible for the higher frequency. The most interesting technical part is that the engineers were able 
to get a crossover frequency between the top part and the lower part at 340 hertz, and this is amazing. For the sub part, it's an vented horn enclosure, patent, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, with two 12 inch, so two 30 centimeters woofers and um, three reflex ports. So the sensitivity of this um, uh, enclosure is uh, 110 dB, so it's pretty loud. Mm -hmm. And the, the top part uh, works with a seven inch uh, driver with a five inch uh, voice coil and uh, titanium um, diaphragm mm -hmm. material. So also top of the range of the material, then we do have that, yeah, let's say outstanding look with the with the, with, the, with the real, um, in that case, walnut um, mm -hmm. uh, wooden style. Um, the height of the speaker is 1 meter 75, so well, almost taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the wide is one, 1 meter 20, 25, and the depth is more than 70 centimeters. So mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I, would, I would say we, we will need a, a nice living room, a huge <laughs> living room, to enjoy this kind of speaker. It's, it's not a speaker, it's not only a speaker, it's, it's also a furniture. Yeah? It's um, like a stager you've got in your living room. And, uh, and by the way, the music reproduction is amazing. It's amazing. The next very interesting point, and for me it's a, it's a real highlight, because the crossover mm -hmm. between the top and the bottom part was the most important point, mm -hmm. and the most challenging point. And uh, there, therefore, the, the new technologies mm -hmm. came into the development, and that's the first speakers working with an active crossover. So mm -hmm. that's the, um, um, yeah, on, on the left side, we, we see that wooden part. So it's an active crossover, and this crossover is not only responsible for cutting the, the frequencies between the top and the high. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also responsible to do a phase shift and the time alignment. So, mm -hmm. and therefore, we do have the, 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 the real impression that the sound is coming from one point. And that later on gives you the impression that the orchestra or the, 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 the music group, the, the band is in front of you. Mm -hmm. You can easily find out where are the different instruments yeah, at the sound stage. Mm -hmm. You can, you can have the impression in the sound wide, but also in the depth. Mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an amazing, amazing sound experience. Yeah, and I think it uh, had to be like pretty difficult to uh, do it from manufacturer's mm -hmm. side, because uh, if I'm correct, the woofers like uh, one ab above uh, other. Yes. Yeah, I yep. uh, here in the center. And it, it will come like uh, this way back to the back. Exactly. And to the yeah. lens. So we, mm -hmm. we do have two 12 inch drivers behind that wooden part and three reflex ports on the, mm -hmm. on the bottom part. And then we can remove it quite easily. Um, yeah. We see the horn technology. So the reflection and the way of um, the signal is from that part mm -hmm. and that output. Yeah. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> You were talking about uh, the active crossover. Yeah. As I read out, uh, read about uh, these uh, speakers, uh, there is something more needed than just one uh, two-way amplifier, or you need it exactly like two. Yeah. Stereo amplifiers. Okay. We we all know that if we would like to power such a big speaker, then we also need a big amplifier. We do, we do not need that, that highest power mm -hmm. rate, but we need a, a very, very stable amplifier. Um, uh, like, like, for example, this um, de demonstration today is running uh, with the Macintosh 901, mm -hmm. which is an um, amazing amplifier for, for, for that kind of speaker. Uh, yes, that's true. So mm -hmm. we will need a, a good amplifier as well. Yeah, and I think the valve amplifier would uh, work the best on them. Is it true, or what do you say? Uh, if a, a valve amplifier works uh -huh. works perfectly, uh, I would say yes. Why not? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so there are different amplifiers at the market. Uh -huh. uh, we tested the, the Jubilee also with different amplifiers. Um, we can recommend um, different styles. Mm -hmm. 
Which one is the best? It's difficult to say because uh, it's also a question what is your personal like? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, uh, and of course, uh, if we are talking about the investment, mm -hmm. it's also a question about investment because this small baby, <laughs> uh, a pair costs 50,000 euro. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you, if you are able to spend another 50K <laughs> for a nice uh, amplifier and uh, pre-amplifier section, it would be fantastic. Yeah, and source, everything has to be sorted out. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, I like how they are efficient. They don't have to or don't need uh, the biggest amplification. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there is like more incentive to go into quality mm -hmm. than uh, of, uh, quantity. Yeah, I, I like them. Yeah, the, the horn technology uh, always has a big advantage. So, uh, and that's the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So we do not need that high power amplifiers with thousands of watts yeah, mm -hmm. uh, to run our speakers with the horn technology. Also the horn technology in, 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 in the other speakers from, from Clip, yeah, like the Premier, Reverence Premier for example. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is this is the biggest advantage here what we've got. Yeah. And this is pretty much the uh, top end of the Heritage yes. series. Yep. There is Ford uh, Convor, Lascala, which I know uh, very much and I love them because we have them in our showroom. So you can come and uh, check it out to hear it, how great it sounds. Uh, but I know okay. there's, there's like one other version <laughs> of it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you are really good at front. Yes, you are right. There is one more. A uh, very interesting loudspeaker from Klipsch at the market. Uh, as you know, um, Klipsch celebrated two years ago the 75th anniversary and based on that amazing event, mm -hmm. the engineers in Hope uh, developed, uh, based on the Jubilee, the 75th anniversary. The 75th anniversary Jubilee has a special optical finish. Uh, it's covered by uh, teak. Mm -hmm in the wooden style. And uh, the Jubilee has a 75th logo with a small diamond <laughs> in <laughs> the middle. And this is a special honor to Paul W. Klipsch. Yes, That's a very nice touch. It's a lot of emotion. It's just uh -huh. that what we, what we discussed uh, or talked about from the beginning. So it's uh, a lot of international brands producing loudspeakers, huge loudspeakers. Mm -hmm. It's always I would say it's quite easy to create a bigger one. Mm -hmm. But here we do not have a bigger one, we have uh, a history maker. Yeah? And this is, this is fantastic. Yeah, and uh, I have to say I love them. I love them from the first sight and uh, the way they are efficient, they, the way they are reproducing the music, pretty much the next step is only to hear it uh, live. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would like to thank uh, Nick to join us today and uh, tell us more about these magnificent speakers. And but you know what we are doing now? Yeah, well. We will have a listening test. Oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> have a nice day, keep watching us. And if you need something more and if you want to listen some other Klipsch speakers, uh, give us a, a phone. You can see it uh, on, a, uh, on a screen right now and we will discuss it and hear it. So have a nice day, see ya. Thank you, bye.